Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to another episode of DIY3DTech.com. And in this episode, what we're going to do is talk a little bit more about uh, Garble and the outputs from the Arduino uh, from Garble. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, how to integrate this with some existing CNC kit out there, especially parallel port. Uh, CNC kit and uh, also talk a little bit about why so let's start out um, with looking at the Arduino in the garble outputs of the Arduino so so basically with version 9 and this is this is the version uh, that we're going to be working with there there's a couple if you go to the uh, uh, garble wiki page um, has a few uh, uh, pinouts and there's kind of a little bit of variation with use of the uh, spindle pulse width modulation so uh, on our specific builds we're really not doing anything with, with the garble shield or the pulse width modulation at this time so I, i'm going to bypass this and just really focus on what it's going to take um, to actually get this up and running and uh, working with an existing um, CNC machine like the, the Probotic uh, Fireball V90. So with this, um, again, uh, you know, pretty much here the Z limit is what they kind of swap around to get the, the, the uh, pulse with. But again, we're not going to worry about this. What we're going to really focus on here is pretty much pins to uh, through seven and a little bit of eight in ground. So I'm going to talk a little bit about these. So so basically, what happens if you have an existing uh, parallel port based um, driven CNC unit, uh, three axis unit? It really, what it's going to be uh, working with is dedicated steppers, uh, stepper drivers, and basically what they're going to look for is a pin state to control direction you know i.e left right up down etc and then also a pulse to activate the number of steps or to activate a step and so basically that's what these pins output and these are the primary pins you're going to need uh, to work with now we're going to talk about a couple others here in a second but really this is going to be the focus so when we look at the typical pinouts of, of a parallel port breakout board, which we find in a lot, not only the probiotics, but uh, many other parallel port based uh, CNC kit, it's going to look very much like this and in, in pr pretty much in a standard configuration. And if we look at this, um, it uses a standard DB25. So uh, basically the uh, receiver, or if we back up here, this board is using a female DB25 and we'll use a male uh, DB25, in other words, a 25 pin board uh, or 25 pin connector, sorry, uh, that will connect to this board. Now, if we look at these pin configurations, we see a couple different things. Now, one of the things, most of the breakout boards are designed for four axis, but typically most people are using three axes, X, Y, and Z. Um, you notice here there's also an A axis, you know, so for example, if you have uh, a, a fourth rotator, etc., uh, on your machine. So, but again, for this, we're just really going to focus on the three. The fourth one works the same. And so, again, just kind of want to talk about some of the concepts here. So, basically, what we have is starting at pin two, we have X step and then we have X direction. And then if we jump back here, we have, you'll see, we have uh, X pulse, which is the step, and then we have X access. So if we connect this to the, the pulse and this to the direction, we have now enabled that signal to go to that driver. And if we actually uh, scroll over here a little bit, you see the driver connectors over here for the various uh, four axes. Again, just focusing on the three axes here. And uh, so again, what you will do is you will match these pins up, basically step in direction, again, step in direction, step in direction, step in direction, with these pins over here for step in direction 
and again tying tying these pins out with those pins now that's probably going to be 90 percent of getting where getting you where to go you need to go the other piece you will have to do is again you will have to tie out ground here it's pin 18 through 25 with uh, basically the ground here now there is another piece to be aware of if you notice here stepper enable disable so there's one pin on pin 8 if you notice over here basically what we have is uh, if, for example for the A we have an enable uh, and then a, we go direction direction uh, step but you see down here we have Y enable X enable Z enable so we basically have three data lines and one power line running to each one of these stepper boards so when we again jump back here uh, pulse and direction are only two so we're missing that third basically all stepper and enable disable does is tells the stepper board are you enabled or not and and basically this is simply pulling it to ground so what you can do is either combine all four all three or four of these enables into one pin and connect it to uh, stepper enable disable or you can simply take it to ground so in, in my case in in the conversion that I did um, Frankly, I found it better if, if I just took it to ground and, and did away with that. Uh, it seemed to be a little bit flaky if I did the stepper enable, disable. I'm not sure why. Uh, however, by taking it to ground, it basically enabled it. Now, one of the things to remember is if you take it to ground, there is no disabling it. Uh, while I don't know for sure, I'm guessing... Part of the reason for the enable disable is for an emergency off switch. So uh, again, if if the board would were to sense an emergency off, then it would disable the the um, steppers and disengage the machine. So by by taking it directly to ground, you're removing this function. But to be frank, I did not really see where we had uh, an emergency off now I mean potentially it could be over here with reset abort I'm really not sure and as I play more with this <clears throat> excuse me I you know might be able to figure that out but at this time I, I'm simply running it to ground uh, most most of the the smaller steppers don't have an enable disable function so um, I, I think more so what I would do uh, with an emergency off switch is use it to cut the power rather than send a logic level to the board and, and expect the board to disable the motors. Um, because again, I think you're running actually more risk and depending upon the logic of the board and the response of the board to, to save you from some sort of harm uh, versus just killing the power. And, and, and that's what I'm going to do with my emergency off is just have it trip out the power period uh, to the stepper drivers, you know, in one false swoop. And then, you know, that way I know you know the motors are offline so anyways and I guess enough about that so again it's it actually was a very simple process I will put another video up that shows the uh, first generation of the end product uh, basically what I did is is uh, uh, breadboard all this in and it does work and this what's kind of really interesting about this is um, how, how actually relatively simple this was. So again, in the past video, I showed how to flash uh, Garble up onto the Arduino. And in this video, I'm kind of talking through the high levels of what I sorted out in, in wiring this thing through. Uh, again, it's, uh, it seems a little bit of intimidating with all the wires and everything, but it just really was uh, very simple to run uh, and again using the universal g-code sender um, as soon as I hooked it up I was able to send commands now you will have to do some settings um, uh, on, on the Arduino slash uh, Gerbil software and as you see I'm kind of pulling this window back in um, <clears throat> 
again, one of the things, uh, keep in mind with version 9, you need to be at the high baud rate and uh, both uh, NL and carriage returns, uh, no line in carriage returns, um, need to be set. And again, if we do the uh, double dollar signs, if I can find it on my keyboard, it basically it prints the... Um, uh, settings of the uh, for a garble with inside the Arduino. One of the big things that we're going to have to change, and you know, I, interestingly enough, it kept the change. Again, I've been I put this video together. I've already done this. I wanted to make sure it all worked uh, before I did the videos. So you'll see that I had I've already changed the uh, steps per millimeter. Uh, to match my uh, probiotic fireball and again I'll probably do another video showing how I came up with some of the math uh, for this as well as how to make the change it is actually rather simple to make the change because for this all we do is type in dollar sign and we say 100 and we can say 100 equals 100 just for grins and giggles so we do that and then we go back and we type in double dollar sign again and you'll see that up here it's now 100 so it's now written um, that to the memory on the processor so again if we go back and we want to fix this we just simply say 100 again and we say 629.921 and we hit enter again double dollar signs and boom we're right back there uh, if you don't know what I'm doing actually right now I'm in the console window so if you select the Arduino uh, go up here to tools serial monitor boom brings up this window and that's uh, basically what I am so each one of these are settings in um, garble that you may have to go through and set uh, some of the pieces I haven't set yet are, are uh, max acceleration rate you kind of see here where I'm highlighting um, you know an acceleration I'm basically using what Garble has standard uh, I will have to go back through I've had the the fireball for about uh, oh, six seven years now so I've forgotten some of the initial settings um, so I have to go sort some of that back out but once I get that I'll probably do a post and also include uh, some screenshots or dumps of this so you can uh, do your own if you're interested in changing. So just real quick, I just kind of wanted to follow up. I know um, as part of the, 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 the probiotic uh, uh, form and stuff, a lot of discussion going on. Why would you do this? Um, again, Mach 3 is so robust and, and everything. Um, and it's also a little bit expensive. We do have a full license of Mach 3, and it is a great program, uh, no question. But the problem is becoming the operating system, really. And when I say operating system, desktop operating systems like Windows, now we're going on Windows 10, uh, Mac OS X, even Linux, are not really real-time operating systems. And what do I mean by real-time operating systems? In other words, a real-time operating system sees something and reacts in real time. For the most part, our desktop computers, laptops, basically any what we refer to in the business as x86 or Intel uh, x86 based systems, which also include AMD and the likes, uh, are not real-time systems. They, they basically work on an interrupt uh, basis. So in other words, uh, something can throw an interrupt. The printer can can say, hey, to the microprocessor, wait a minute, I, I want to turn here. Please pay attention to me now. And whatever the processor was doing, it's going to stop doing that and go take care of that and then come back. Now, we as humans don't notice this. It happens all so fast. And again, at the OS and application level, there is many things in there to do error checking and to wait and, and to do all those various things. Well, if you're running a machine, you can't wait. You know, it, 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 everything is happening in real time and this is where I think the Arduino is such a great little device is that um, it basically has no OS for practical purposes it, it simply runs some machine code which it understands natively takes input processes output it, it really is the perfect controller device and this is one of the things that you'll see in the controller space what's called in the process control space is dedicated controllers and that's really 
what the Arduino is very strong about, and, and this is really sort of the difference between, say, the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi, which runs Linux, is, is again, this is much more real-time. Now, again, we could go in for hours and hours to, to explain the detail, but that's, that's uh, you know, the gist of it.